Hey guys, so I'm going to show you some pictures of inventory or my anime collection. Our intern, he's taking them to learn photography and videography. So I felt like I should put it up here. But the main reason I'm making this video is to explain why I don't have many friends. So I am not antisocial. I have to be social because I own a company. And when you own a company, you have worker bees. I lovingly call them worker bees. And you have clients and you have prospects. So all these people, you have to be social. We are going to a grand opening tomorrow. It is 3 a.m. when I'm making this video and the grand opening is like 3 p.m. So I have, but I think all the interns are coming in at 10 a.m. or something like that. So I need to be, I need to obviously meet them at that time. But I wanted to explain why as I've grown older, I've lost a lot of friends who play magic. And the community has changed a lot. And one of my friends uh, who owns a much bigger collection than I did, he recently or two years ago sold his collection because he is again, he's a white male and he wasn't comfortable with some of the harassment as as strange as it sounds that he was receiving as a white male in the magic community uh, obviously he has money he is a energy trader before being an energy trader he played professional soccer so i'll just leave it there and he collects magic cards i collect magic cards and we're friends I told you that story about middle school, elementary school, all this stuff, even in NYU in college, if you met another magic player, even if you didn't like their personality, even if you didn't like uh, their attitude, you would be friends because it's hard to find magic players, uh, at least in my experience, that um, go to school with you or you see every day, which would be school or, wor or work. Now, the problem I feel is that there's a lot of individuals who are very loud and they're trying to isolate and destroy local game stores. And the best way to destroy local game stores is to talk about them being a bad place for women uh, by saying that it, this is not me saying it and I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to repeat myself, but you can go back to the tweets. Many females on Twitter are advocating that local game stores are pretty much very dangerous places for females, uh, either because of a certain culture or, I mean, I don't know how they're more dangerous than a bar or a club. And you probably see more females at a club or a bar than you do at Friday Night Magic. I assume, right? I don't, I live all, I live in Houston, so maybe it's different from and other places is 90% female, but I don't know. So it used to be, hey, you play magic. I play magic. Let's be friends. Let's invite each other to sleepover parties. Let's have birthday parties. Let's have fun together. Uh, let's play commander. We did, Emperor is my favorite format of all time. Let's play uh, raffle decks where we bid life and card hand size on know each other's decks so we get to play a new deck without spending insane amount of money right that was magic for me magic for me was being in my best friend's basement with a random bunch of other dudes playing magic the gathering until like 5 a.m and it was fantastic it was fun i really enjoyed it and that is so when i seem a little upset about some things that are going on it's because you have to understand my my core belief is that magic is a game that everyone should be invited oh i mean not not sexual predators let me let me the fact that i have to say this is insane right but when i mean everyone i mean as long as you're not a sexual a sexual predator okay i'll, I'll just put it out there that you can meet someone anywhere you went. So when I went from Pennsylvania to New York City, I found a magic player group. It was amazing, right? And we all liked each other. And when I went to Williamsburg, 
for uh, law school. I found an amazing group of geckos. They bank, I mean, they bankrupt six times, but when I was there, but man, that was a great play group. I still remember the names, Gavin and Devin. And I mean, uh, Sam, it was just a really great play group. And we were all so different from each other. Uh, Sam, and I forget what her name was, but she wanted to be a vet. And we all had fun. We all just dis- discussed like what we wanted to do, um, what we wanted to... Um, and and just, d- during the summertime, that's when we had the most fun because Gavin would get back from uh, college. He went to some type of community college locally, but he lived in Williamsburg. We had a blast. And those were those were my friends, even outside Magic, that we would go to get food. I'm very cautious about who I get food with now. I mean, I used to have that old story. If you go all the way back to New Law Student, when I we had the chili tra- tradition. And we used to have that where it was just a random bunch of dudes and we go to Chili's and we order stuff and it was great. Um, I enjoyed it. I can't do that anymore. Uh, it's not about do I feel safe? To, no, I don't. No, it's not about any of that. Uh, what it is is I just don't. Hmm. How can I say it? I'm trying not to be offensive, uh, but I'm going to be offensive. The current circumstance in our community makes it really easy for someone to post something about you online and make you look bad. Outside of magic, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you will know that I have 35,000 followers on LinkedIn, 50 on Twitter, but I don't use Twitter anymore, a few on Instagram. And I've been in situations where people are out to get you. The mana leak, I know I've talked about this in detail, but it drives me crazy that someone would take pleasure in someone else losing their job and gloat about that. I know when I let someone go, they have a family, they have a dog, they have responsibilities, they have student loans, they have car loans, they have mortgages. Because we talk about that at the workplace. Um, And maybe not every workplace is that personally invested, but I am. And that's my company. 100% now, thankfully. And I just feel... I feel sick. Like, I don't... I don't want to ever jeopardize my worker bees. I don't want to ever be put in a position where people would gloat about me losing my job. Uh, Luckily, I'm the boss, so it's kind of hard to do that. But I don't want to say something that is offensive to someone else and be banned for life in Magic. I still enjoy this game. There's a lot of consequences that I'm not prepared to accept and to avoid danger. I never tell you guys where I'm doing a pre-release. I never tell you when I'm going to a GP. I don't tell you even the day I'm going. I don't tell you guys where I go play FNM. And I did not tell you where my store is physically located. The reason I don't do this is because I know if I do it, there will be people in the community which tweets that we have all read that will try to, for lack of a better term, destroy me for no other reason than they don't like my opinions and they can't accept it because they have done that to MTG headquarters. Uh, Jeremy's, his wife has been stalked and kind of attacked by that really weird guy um people have gloated that he has lost his job it just makes me sick i'm and i've been on record i'm not jeremy's biggest fan but i would not wish what he's experiencing on anyone it's not that i'm like a sore boy or something like that right i'm pretty difficult to deal with um I've always been that way, but there are certain things that like attacking someone's wife or stalking someone's wife, making memes of it, um, gloating over someone losing their job. 
if I lose my job, all my worker bees, they have kids and they have ballet dance. I remember um, one of daycare costs and uh, I just ordered a new computer. Even the interns, you know, what would they do? Like, right? Um, I tend to give opportunities to people who need them. Uh, gas station cashiers, Single moms, uh, I mean, in 2017, I fostered five different dogs, four different cats, and two ferrets that I've adopted because I couldn't adopt them out. So they're no longer fosters. They're just my ferrets now. I never imagined I would own a ferret or even two, but it is what it is, right? I opened my home for Hurricane Harvey for victims to come stay the night and then drive to Dallas. You know, I had, I wasn't affected by the flood very much. I mean, it was close, but I don't think it really affected anything. I had electricity the whole time. So I had a washer and dryer. I have um, hot water, uh, food. I had lots of food and, uh, because the home office is uh, gets lots of cliff bars and stuff. So we had plenty of food and ramen, right? Ramen noodles. And I opened my home to complete strangers. I'm not saying that that I'm not saying this to make people feel bad and oh, I wish you would have done that. I'm just saying that once I've grown older and grown out of the phase that I think a lot of these people are in, their, their bubbles, find good people, adore those good people, and keep them around because if you don't you're not going to find that many more good people for you and your life. So that's my, that's my main takeaway. And that's why I want to make this video anyway. Bye.